We have a user going through our Next.js application that we set up in the last video. Go ahead and check that one out if you haven't yet. And then they're going to use the Amplify libraries that we haven't hooked up yet, but they're going to make that request go through API Gateway through a Lambda function, in this case, to list out all the data inside of our database. And then that Lambda function is going to be targeting DynamoDB to get all the books inside of the D database, the DB. What does this look like in practice? Well, that's what we're going to go ahead and discuss in this video. Okay, so we didn't get too far in the last video in terms of code and project setup. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to get rid of some of this boilerplate stuff so that we really do just have our backend stack right here. Now, one of the things that I like to do is separate my services inside of their own unique folders. And I know you might come at me in the comments, but I do not like to use classes. So I'm going to be using functions whenever I can. That's just a me thing. If you prefer to use classes, do your thing. Now, first thing that I'm going to be doing is creating this API gateway. Even though we need a database, even though we need Lambda functions, let's create API gateway first. Uh, so jump in here, we're going to say export const. And the way that I like to do it is I'm going to be calling this file inside of my backend stack. So inside of here, uh, so I'm going to be calling it something like, hey, create an API gateway, right? So create uh, something I typically do is like cruddle API gateway, something like that. And we're going to set that equal to a function. Now, in terms of props, what is it going to take in? Well, it's going to take in this right here. And then I'm just going to pass in the word props after that. I know we're running out of screen real estate. I can use option Z to word wrap all of that. Now it's like, hey, we don't know anything about this uh, cruddle props thing. So we're going to set that equal to this function right here. Are you not the same? Awesome. So we have that in place. Uh, next thing to do is to go ahead and create our API. I already have some snippets so that way you don't have to see me type and make typos. So REST API, this is coming from API Gateway itself, as you can see right up here. It is going to take in as props the API name. That's just going to be a string, no big deal there. And this is going to be used as both the logical ID as well as the API name. When it comes to creating a RESTful API, you really just need a name. Now, what's cool is that this will create an API for us, and it's going to be something like, you know, super random letters dot dot com. In our case, though, we want our API or specific API to be at slash books. So the way that you go about that is you say, hey, um, from the base, I want to go ahead and add a resource to to the root. I mean, so at the API root, at that final slash, I want to add in a resource, which is going to be this base resource name. I'm passing this in as a prop, but in all honesty, it's going to come in as a string and it's going to be slash books, which is going to be the, the resource name here. Now we are calling this API from the front end, right? So if you have been doing front end development for any amount of time, you know, that cores is a thing and it is not fun to work with. So what I'm going to do here for the sake of brevity is be like, Hey, on this base API, I want you to allow all the origins. So like any endpoint can call this also allow all the methods. Now, technically I only need two origins here, right? I need local hosts and then I need my live website. So you can tweak that if you want. I think it's just an array. And then in terms of the allowed methods, this is your typical get, put, whatever, or, you know, post, delete, etc. on here. I already know that this endpoint is going to be needing a couple different verbs. So I'm going to keep that as the same. Cool. Now we have a decision to make. Do we want to use API gateway to go directly to DynamoDB, which you absolutely can do, but then you have to write something called velocity template language, or do you want to have a Lambda function? So that way you can use JavaScript and TypeScript to make that call for you. More than often than not, a lot of developers, when they're first starting off, are going to be using a Lambda function. So we're going to have this Lambda integration right here. And this is going to be coming from my get all base function. So when I want to get all of my resources, I'm going to be calling this. And this is going to be of type I function. So basically a type of a, a function, a Lambda function, as you can see right here. Now, in terms of the integration and what this is, it's like, hey, API Gateway, how are you going to be integrating with whatever data you're trying to get to? And in my case, I'm using a Lambda function. 
Now, how is the front end going to be calling this method? Because it knows what the integration is, but it doesn't know what the verb is that it's going to be using. So I can say, hey, base resource, we're going to be adding a method here. And it is going to be a get method. So a get request coming from the front end. And it is going to be using this integration right here, this get all base integration. So you can kind of see how it ties together where you have, hey, API gateway, this is my slash books in this, in this case. So we'll say slash, whoops, slash books right here. And then from here, uh, that is going to be tied into a Lambda function. And this Lambda function is going to be assigned to a get route. So that's how it all kind of all comes together. Now, because it is a function, let's go ahead and return it. We're going to go ahead and return this API. And now I do believe we're in a pretty good spot to at least call this from our main stack file. So let's go to our backend stack. And now that we're back in this file, let's go ahead and call that create API gateway method. So cons, please help me out IntelliSense. Thank you. And this is actually going to be my books API. And this is going to equal you code whisper. Awesome. We have this in place and now it's like, yo, you need to give me some props. Using IntelliSense, I can say that for some of the props here, let's see here. Oh, did I miss something up? Oh, we didn't get the IntelliSense quite right. This is going to be my construct and then these are my props. In terms of the actual fields themselves, there we go. It knows that the API name is called books. That'll work. And in terms of the base resource, base resource name, we have books right here. And then in terms of, there we go, this Lambda function that it's looking for. It's like, hey, you have to give me an actual Lambda function. We don't have one yet. So this gives us a pretty good next step of what to do. So we can go over to our file system. And let's say outside of this API, we're going to have a new file. And this file is going to be called, well, it's going to be inside of a folder called functions. And then we can say that this is going to be our get books func. And this is going to be the folder name because it contains two files. One is going to be our construct.ts. And then the other one is going to be main.ts. So we essentially have a way to define the Lambda function. And then we have a way to write all the, the Lambda code that'll eventually go in here. We're going to come back to this file, but let's look at the construct itself. Nothing too crazy. In fact, so let's paste this code in and then, you know, we can talk about it. So we have our get pets function props. It's going to take in a name. It's going to take in the ARN of the DynamoDB table that is trying to get the data from. And then it's going to take in some environment variables, specifically the table name itself, because it's going to need that inside of the um, Lambda. Going down a little bit, we're going to use that same methodology where we have a function that is called create get pets function. I was going to take in a construct, same as that this that we pass in on our API gateway has the props. And then really the core of it is that when it comes to creating this function, we have the Node.js function right here. We have the function name being passed in as props. We are using node 18. And then we have, hey, what is the file called? Main.ts. So we are going to be using TypeScript inside of this file here. And then the Lambda needs to know, hey, where is the, the DynamoDB table that I'm going to be accessing? What is its name? So I can pass in as an environment variable to this Lambda function, the actual name itself. Now I have pets here. Uh, that's just a typo. I'm actually just going to do a quick find and replace here. So everywhere where it says pets, I'm going to rename that to books. And then if I click on here, I can match the case, do a replace, I'll switch that up, go to books. And then from here, we can say, preserve the casing and then match all. Awesome. So you can see here, it was books with a lower B, books with a capital B, all that stuff was preserved. And that's why I love VS Code. So we have to give the Lambda function the ability to actually grab all this data, right? So here is the policy that we need. It's a simple scan. As you can see in 30 lines of code, we have everything that we need. Now this simply creates the Lambda function. We have to actually tell it how it's going to get that data from DynamoDB. So for that logic, let's head over to main.ts. 
And then we're going to paste in all the code uh, needed to make that happen. Cool, so I just pasted that in and here's what we have here. Let's ignore the imports. We'll come back to that in just a moment, but we're going to instantiate a new DynamoDB client. From here, we're going to define our parameters that our function needs to grab the data. Specifically, it's going to be the name of the DynamoDB table that it's trying to access. Note that over in our other file here, we gave it this environment variable. So this is what we're pulling from process.env right here. This does have to be table name because over when we use our params on this scan command, we are telling it at this point to grab the data from that table. Simple enough, we're doing some logging to make sure that we have the results. But as we get those back, the data that we care about is going to be in results.items. But keep in mind that since we're using a scan, it'll have things like total count, failed count, etc. In any case, it gives us all the data in DynamoDB format. So if you have a string, it's like S colon whatever. So we unmarshal that so that we can get an actual everyday JSON object back for us. We return that and over in our handler, we say, yeah, status code 200. Uh, here are some course headers that we can pass back. Note that API gateways cores will handle incoming requests. And then these handle the requests going back. So you need both. And then we stringify those and send it back as a JavaScript object. Nothing too crazy, but as I mentioned, we do have a couple of imports that we need to take care of. So let's import the SDK here, and this has to be in our backend folder. So let's make sure that we're in there. A CD backend and then PMI. Cool. Uh oh, that didn't work. Oh, it's modular, right? So we need both. Uh, we need the ability to have this file and this file respectively. One cool thing that you can do, I believe, is that you can say client DynamoDB and util DynamoDB all in one go. So it'll be something like this, like clear this out, npmi, do that, slash, and then curly braces, and util DynamoDB, comma, and what are you, client DynamoDB? Just like that, and that'll install both packages. It was a nice little, I remember that from the Babel days, where we had to do stuff like that. But this should get picked up. Those warnings are gone. Our item now has the actual type that it needs, and the day is saved. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. So we have API gateway set up, we have our Lambda function set up, and it's going to a DynamoDB table that we haven't even created yet. So let's fix that. For those of you that don't know, creating a DynamoDB table is actually one of the easiest things to do inside of the CDK. So I'm going to say database and then slash pets table.ts. As mentioned, I have this project already set up with pets. So I'm going to rename this to pet books table and then do a quick little find and replace. Great. So we have this. And the cool thing is that we have our table props coming in for the book API. And then when it comes to creating the table itself, it's like four properties, right? We give it the name. We tell it we want to have on-demand billing. Uh, we give it the removal policy. This is actually new. This says, hey, if as we're creating this table, something were to go wrong, then delete the table then. But if this were to happen when the table is already created, then keep that table around. It's a nice little mix of retain and delete. And then in terms of how we're going to be identifying these books, we're going to be simple here. I know we can do crazy things with access patterns, but we're just going to give it a partition key of an ID, which is a string. And with that, I believe we have all three pieces of Exodia. Give me a shout out in the comments if you understood that reference. That's a good one. So we can go ahead and bring in our books table. Awesome. So I have everything imported inside of this file now. So we have our books table referencing the table that we just created. We have the Lambda function itself, and then we have our books API that we constructed earlier as well. Now we are missing this part right here. So we want to go ahead and grab this, and this is going to be our get books function and just like that. And this should be enough to get everything taken care of. So let's test this out real quick. We can come over here. Now, a couple of things that we want to do to make sure that this is all working. Let's deploy this and then we'll call it from the um, front end. So to deploy this, we can bump this up just a little bit for us and bring it all the way over. So now we can say something like MPX, AWS, CDK, deploy. And then just a heads up, I don't use a profile when I'm teaching or the default profile. So I have my sandbox account. So I'm going to be doing a dash dash profile. But if you just have your default account, that's perfectly fine. If we're going to deploy this, 
and see if it all works on the first try. That'd be cool. Uh, it looks like it doesn't. I always forget this. Whenever we're using a Lambda function, we want to go ahead and bring in ES build. All good. Let's go ahead and do an npm i d to save it as a dev dependency, and then we'll have ES build in the mix right here. Great. Try it again. Whoops, I already installed these. All right, try that again. There you go. You can see it's synthesizing. We have the roles that it's saying it's going to create. And with that in place, let's go ahead and push this up. This part happens fairly quickly, but I'm not going to have you sit here and watch it deploy. Once it's done, we'll go ahead and pick things back up. All right, and just like that, our API went ahead and got deployed. So we have this endpoint here, right? But let's take a look and see what happens if we just take this and go over to our browser. So I'm going to bring over Arc our browser right on the side here, open up a new tab and type this in. Now this is common. You'll get this missing authentication token and you're like, ah, oh, what's going on? And it turns out that you just have to go to your slash books route, right? That was the base of our, of our route. So if I go to slash books, our Lambda function is going to fire and we can see we get an empty array back. That's awesome. That's great. That means that we have no books inside of our database. And if you wanted to take this one step further, you can actually go to something like Thunder Client which is going to be a lot like, what was that one app called? I don't know, somebody let me know in the comments. That one app called where you could like make requests. So we get, so, but here's the thing, 703 milliseconds, that's a super long time, right? I mean, from a cold start perspective. Now, if I hit this up again, we get 353, it cut in half, but still that to me is a long time. So in later videos, we'll see how we can make that a little bit quicker. In the meantime, we have what we need. We're able to access our API from the browser. We have core set up, and then we can pull this in from a website. 